Or I rise giving the most high praise to Allah and the highest honors to his noble and divine prophet, Prophet Noble Jali. I also extend honors to our Moorish American flag with the five great point of star, the five points representing love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. I also give honors to the United States flag. I also would like to extend honors to our forerunner, Marcus Mosiah Garvey. I also extend honors to the Sheikh staff, the Vanguard staff, the Ells and Bays, and all of the members of the Moorish Science Temple of America. Islam. I would like to start my measure by taking a look at the cover of the 101s or the Quran, Quran questions for Moorish American children. And I'll hold it up for the camera. If we take a look at this, and brother, if you don't have a copy, you can take a look at mine. If we take a look at this, we see that our prophet has one foot inside of the water and one foot out. And what the water represents is, as it's written in the water, is the cares of the world. And that, that shore represents salvation. So reflecting on that, I just thought about the more Science Temple of America representing, or the prophet and what he brought us representing the first step to salvation. That nationality in our divine creed is our first step to salvation. And I'm going to read from chapter 17. I'm going to start at verse 16. When you have it, say as long. Start at verse 16. It says, Claudius and Juliet, his wife, lived on the Palatine in Rome, and they were servants of Tiberius. But they had been in Galilee, had walked with Jesus by the sea, had heard his words and seen his power, and they believed that he which Jesus made manifest. Now, when we read this, keep in mind that that water and anything related to water represents the cares of the world. Verse 18. Now, Claudius and his wife were on the Tiber in a little boat. So they were on the water in a little boat. A storm swept from the sea, and the boat was wrecked, and Claudius and his wife were sinking down to death. Now, in my mind, this little boat represents something that's temporary, something that's finite. And us, being Negro, Black, and colored, that represents something finite. That's not our nationality. That's not our identity. It was something to get us through a certain part of our existence, but it's not who we are. It's not the essence of us. And so now we see, by calling ourselves Negro, Black, and colored, we're sinking down into the cares of the world. Nothing good comes from being Negro, Black, and colored. Nothing, when you think of black people, or you think of Negroes, because it's the same word, what do you think of? Do you think of highest, the highest forms of civilization? Or do you think of, you know, people hanging out and murder, slander, lewdness, and theft, and everything that harms? And Jesus came and took them by the hands and said, Claudius and Juliet, arise and walk with me upon the waves. So us being in the more Science Temple of America, we're supposed to teach people. We're supposed to be that message that we bring. We're supposed to be that love made manifest as our brother Jesus was. We're supposed to teach people to walk upon the cares of the, cares of the, upon the, cares of the world or the waves or the waters. And they arose and walked with him upon the waves. A thousand people a thousand people saw three walk on the waves and saw them reach the land or reach salvation and they were all amazed and jesus said you men of rome i am the resurrection and the life they that are dead shall live and many shall live and many that shall live will never die by mouth of gods and demigods allah spoke unto your fathers long ago but now he speaks unto you through perfect man. So keep that in mind, that Allah speaks to us through perfect man. So in order to be 
an ambassador or one who goes out on behalf of the Morris Science Temple of America. You do have to be pure and keep that in mind. He sent his son Jesus in human flesh to save the world. And as I lift and as I lifted from the watery grave and saved the servants of Tiberius, so Jesus will lift the sons and daughters of the human race, yea, every one of them, from darkness from, and from graves of carnal things, to light and everlasting life. So we are supposed to be that embodiment of Jesus today, or the embodiment of our prophet, Noble Jar Lee, today, and lifting people from the cares of the world, lifting people from those carnal thoughts and carnal deeds. I am the manifest of love raised from the dead. Behold, my hands, my feet, my side, which carnal men have pierced. Fathers and Juliet, whom I have saved from death, are my ambassadors to Rome, and they will point the way and preach the gospel of the holy breath and the resurrection of the dead. And that was all he said, but Rome and all of Italy heard. So this is our mission as members of the Morris Science Temple of America, to be that message that we bring, to be that example of the highest degree of civilization. So when we go out and about, we have to remember to be pure. And I'll read, I'll also like to read from chapter four on purity. And I'll start at verse eight. And when you have it, say Islam. Mm -hmm. And this is Matino speaking to, speaking to John after the passing of his mother. And it says, a crisis in your life has come, and you must have a clear conception of the work that you are called to do. And this can also be referred to us, speaking to us in the more Science Temple of America. Because as we lost our nation, or our mother, we lost our history, a crisis has come to us as a race of people, to us as a nation of people. So we have to have a clear conception of the work that we're called to do. It has to be pure. It has to be unmixed. You can't say, okay, well, I want to be a Moorish American on Friday and be a Negro on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Saturday. The sages of the ages call you harbinger. The prophets look to you and say, he is Elijah, come again. Your mission here is that of a harbinger or a forerunner. For you will go before the Messiah's face to pave his way and make the people ready to receive their king. Like I said, the Morris Science Temple of America is that first institution to bring us back into civilization. So we are the first ones. We are the ambassadors, as Claudius and Juliet were. The readiness is purity of heart. None but the pure in heart can recognize the king. To teach men to be pure in heart you must yourself be pure in heart and word and deed. So in this, we have to be, we have to be pure. Everybody's not going to recognize the temple right away, to be honest. You do have to be pure in heart to hear these words, to pick up this small book and to unfold it for everything that it is. And I'll read that again. This readiness is purity of heart None but the pure in heart can recognize the king. To teach men to be pure in heart, you must yourself be pure in heart and word and deed. In infancy, in infancy, the vow for you was made and you became a Nazarite. The razor shall not touch your face nor head and you shall taste not wine nor fiery drinks. Men need a pattern for their lives. They love to follow and not to lead. The man who stands upon the corners of the paths and points the way, but does not go, is just a pointer, and a block of wood can do the same. The teacher treads the way. On every span of ground, he leaves his footprints clearly cut, which all can see and be assured that he, their master, went that way. So it says that in our Moorish literature, it says Moors are men, upright, independent, and fearless, or men and women, upright, independent, and fearless. So this isn't for, this movement and being a Moorish American isn't for the faint or the weak of heart. Like you have to have integrity 
to be in this movement. You have to have resilience to be in this movement because you will get knocked down. You will get pushed off of your path, but you have to just keep leaving your footprints clearly cut for those to follow. Men comprehend the inner life by what they see and do. They come to Allah through ceremonies and forms. And so when you would make men know that sins are washed away by purity and light, the right symbolic may be introduced. In, in water, wash the bodies of the people who would turn away from sins and strive for purity. And so remember that water, it can still represent the cares of the world. That care, the cares of the world and us going through the cares of the world is a purifying process, is burning certain things away. We have to get rid of certain things. We have to see what we don't like in order to know what we like. We have to see the things that are not beneficial for us to really appreciate being a part of a nation. This right of cleansing is a, is a preparation right, and they who thus are cleansed comprise the temple of purity. And you shall say, you men of Israel, hear, reform, and wash, become the sons of purity, and you shall be forgiven. This rite of cleansing and this temple are but symbolic of the cleansing of the soul, which does not come from outward show, but is the temple within. Now you may never point the way and tell the, and tell the multitudes to do what you have never done, but you must go before and show the way. You are to teach that men must wash, so you must lead the way. Your body must be washed. Your body must be washed, symbolic of the cleansing of the soul. And John said, why need I wait? May I not go at once and wash? So that, that last statement that John made, why need I wait? May I not go at once and wash? That showed a sense of urgency in what he was doing. That showed a sense of urgency in him wanting to be purified. So we owe it to our prophets and those that came before us to have that same urgency to be purified. It's not okay to still hold on to those vices that come with being Negro, black, and color. We should want to hurry and be purified. And I'm going to read just um, two more verses out of verse 17, um, verses 37 and 38 in regards to purity. Okay, and it says there is a holy ministry in death. So there's, okay, well, black according to science means what? Mm -hmm. Means death. So in our being black and going through this process, there's a holy ministry. The essence, or I'll start the rush over. There's a holy ministry in death. The essence of the body cannot be quickened by the holy breath until the fixed is solved. The body must disintegrate, and this is death. And upon these pliant substances, Allah breathes, just as he breathed upon the chaos of the deep when the worlds were formed. So this breaking down, this humbling of us, this experience of us going through being black, going through being Negro, going through being African American, or whatever, whatever else somebody else chooses to label us at that time, is a humbling experience. Because we were very haughty. And that's how we fell. And I'll also read verse, or chapter 15, verse 15. Also in regards to fear, in, in regards to purity. And when you have it, say Islam. Islam. And this is. I'll read. Uh, I'll start at verse 12. And this is a, in this setting. The, Satan was tempting Jesus basically to um, basically to do all of these things to prove his Messiahship. And Jesus said, I may not tempt the Lord my God. And then the tempter said, look forth upon the world. Behold, its honors and its fame. Behold, its pleasures and its wealth, or everything that 
the loose, the slavery, all of the things that pertain to the lower self. If you will give your life for those, they sh if you will give your life for these, they shall be yours. But Jesus said, away from me all tempting thoughts. My heart is fixed, or my heart is pure, or my heart is immutable, or my heart is unmoved. It can't be changed. He had a clear conception of where he was going, and he knew where, basically where we needed to be. And I'll read that again. But Jesus said, away from me all tempting thoughts. My heart is fixed. I spurn this carnal self with all its vain ambition and its pride. Islam. And I'll read verse 16 as well. For 40 days did Jesus wrestle with his carnal self. His higher self prevailed. He then was hungry, but his friends had found him, and they ministered to him. So, basically, even after he knew where he wanted to go, he still had a fight. He still had a struggle that he had to endure. And verse 17, then Jesus left the wilderness, and in the consciousness and in the consciousness of the holy breath, he came unto the camps of John and taught. And with that, I just like to remind everybody to strive for purity and strive for perfection and remember the work that we're called to do and have a clear conception. Even if you fall short, still have a clear conception and get back to that same path and that that's when your will will be stronger. Islam. And with that, I'll leave you all as I came in peace. Islam.